So we here at The Daily Green are very interested in weird weather. We uh, uh, invite our audience to submit photos that they take of uh, weird weather events in their backyards. And you've imagined for us a, an extremely strange weather event. Uh, that's a hurricane hitting New York City. So can you tell us how likely it is that a hurricane would hit the city? Well, you know, every 70 years to 90 years, a major hurricane has hit New York City. We're coming up on that 70th anniversary next year. The last time a Category 3 storm hit here was in 1938. The, the storm was called the uh, Long Island Express, and it was had winds of 150, 155 miles per hour. It passed over Nassau County on Long Island. It caused 700 deaths. So at that time, there was only 200,000 residents on Long Island. Today, there's nearly 3 million. So in a Category 3 storm, quite different when it comes into the Northeast than it is in the southern United States. You're familiar that they move very slowly, 7 to 14 miles per hour. A northeastern storm much different. It races at 40 to 45 miles per hour into the northeast. Because of our landmass, we have a right angle landmass, Long Island going from west to east, the Jersey Shore, the New York City Harbor area. That water has no place to go in a hurricane that moves counterclockwise coming into the south shore of Long Island. So really a category two storm in the Gulf or the southeast becomes a three in the northeast. A category three becomes a number four in terms of storm surge. So when a storm is coming up from south to north, the first places that are impacted is going to be lower Manhattan. It's going to be the Battery. It's going to be Coney Island. It's going to be Brighton Beach. It's going to be Roosevelt Beach. All those areas are going to see a wall of water 22 feet high. That wall of water completely covers the coastline of the south shore of Long Island. So as it passes over the Battery in lower Manhattan, Brooklyn, Queens, that 22 feet of water goes right over the Battery and continues right across Battery Park all the way up to City Hall. So 22 feet of water covers Governor's Island. It comes up to the very bottom of the Statue of Liberty. It covers the pedestal up to the bottom of the Statue of Liberty. That's a lot of water. Now on the south shore of Long Island, that completely covers Fire Island, comes inland, comes into Jamaica Bay, and that water covers the very top of the terminals at JFK Airport. So if hurricane hits, we're here in Midtown Manhattan, the uh, best thing I could do would be to get on a subway, right? Subway in a hurricane, worst place to go. And I think that's a perception that many people do not realize because of lack of experience with a storm of this type. First place that's going to be inundated with salt water is going to be the tunnels and it's going to be the subways. Particularly in lower Manhattan from Wall Street, Bowling Green, up the east side, past the South Street Seaport, up the west side, past where the World Trade Center location is. You go up past Chambers Street, all those areas to the Holland Tunnel will be flooded with salt water. That totally wipes out the capability of your subway system. If you look at the major infrastructure of the city, all of this lies on the coast. Take a look at the coast and what is there. Power plants, airports, subways, tunnels, wastewater treatment plants, your drinking water facilities, all that lies right on or at the coast. What people do not realize around the country is New York City is a coastal community. So we've talked about lower Manhattan. What about northern Manhattan? Are you safe if you're up in, uh, in Harlem uh, along the East River, say? Hurricanes move counterclockwise, so the city is not only flooded from the south, but as it pushes into Connecticut, the Harlem River, the East River, all will flood northern Manhattan. So Harlem and all that area up the east side is going to be flooded. The FDR Drive is going to be totally inundated with water that will pour into the upper east side. So not only does the storm flood the city from the south, as it moves northward, it will flood the city from the north. It will flood Brooklyn from the north, it will flood upper Manhattan from the north, and even the upper west side is going to see some flooding from uh, the Hudson River. The second problem that you will have is freshwater flooding because a storm of this nature is going to produce at least 10 inches of rain. In a nor'easter, we get four or five inches of rain, totally knocks the city out for a, for a period of time. So for people in the city here, where would they go? How would people uh, evacuate in the event of a hurricane? Office of Emergency Management, the OEM in the city, has a plan, and it's a very good one. Now, of course, that plan has never had any experience being exercised whatsoever or put into use. But the plan is to bus and use the subway and evacuate residents of the coastal areas of Brooklyn and Queens and the South Shore of Long Island into inland areas. There's no way that residents of New York City are going to be able to get into cars and get into buses and travel away from the city 
into Pennsylvania and upstate New York. What's going to happen is what's called vertical evacuation. Residents are bused or taken by subway to buildings that are hurricane proof, that are structurally sound, and they will be put in those buildings during the duration of the hurricane. You know, fortunately, the storm is a fast mover. It's only going to last five or six hours once it gets here. Its damage will be twice as severe as a storm in the south.